Let's mess with the layout files a little bit now. Like it did with the original main activity.java file, Android has given us some default stuff that we don't really need. For now, it's probably just easier to write our own from scratch. Let's navigate over to the resources, layout folder, and delete the two default files that were placed in there when we created our project. Then we'll want to right click on the layout folder and select to add a new Android XML document. We'll want to name it activity underscore main since that's the file name our main activity will look for when it calls the set content view method. We'll also want to select the relative layout option. This might be a good time to briefly go over what relative layout means. There are a few types of layouts in Android which include relative, frame, and linear. Each layout defines how views in a file can be organized. For example, in a linear layout all the views are organized in a single column or a single row. In an absolute layout all views given a specific location on the screen and actual pixel coordinate values. In a relative layout, which I find the most flexible, we can use other views in the layout as a reference point to position other views. When the XML file loads, we'll see some default encoding and other information in the layout tags. XML is organized where there are start and end tags, sort of like HTML. All their XML tags that are within a group of start and end tags are considered children of whatever is defined by the start and end tags that they're enclosed in. We'll put all our views within the start and end tags for the layout, nesting them inside the layout. In the start tag is where the attributes for the view is defined. As you can see, the layout tag has Android layout width and Android layout height. Because XML is not Android exclusive, we need to prepend many of our attributes that refer to Android specific data types with Android. This is to indicate that these attributes exist within the Android library. Layout height and layout width are required attributes for every view defined in the XML. Otherwise, Android wouldn't know how big or small to make the object. We can see that these are both set to match underscore parent, which just means to make them as big as whatever the view is nested within. In this case, for the layout, it would be the screen size, but if we had a text view within the relative layout and set its height or width to match parent, it would expand to fill the size of the layout. Other options we have for layout height and layout width includes the use of wrap underscore content, which we'll see in a second. This indicates that Android should only size the view just enough to show the values it contains and nothing more. We can also use pixel, scale independent values or density independent values. To do so, we can write something like 10px, which will create a size of 10 pixels. Replacing px with sp creates a scale independent value, which we should always use for text size values, since things with this value can be scaled by a user's font size preference. If you use 10dp instead, we'll be using density independent pixels. As an excellent answer on Stack Overflow describes that these as an abstract unit that is based on the physical density of the screen. These units are relative to a 160 dpi screen, so 1 dp is 1 pixel on a 160 dpi screen. The ratio of dp to pixel will change with the screen density, but not necessarily in direct proportion. Let's put some text in this layout. If we remember from earlier, Android has a type of view called a text view. To create a text view, we'll write text view Android layout underscore width equals wrap underscore content, and then Android layout underscore height equals wrap underscore content and wrap content should be in quotes. In this instance our ending tag is non-existent since we ended the object with a slash before the closing tag. We can do this because we don't need anything to be nested within the text view. So now we have a text view except it doesn't have text. Let's add that by typing the attribute android text equals hello comma world. We can view what our layout will look like by clicking the graphical layout tab at the bottom of the code editing window. We can see our text now appears on the screen. Let's go back to the XML and add some attributes to spice this up a little bit. We'll add these attributes. Android text size equals 35 SP. Android layout underscore center horizontal equals true. And Android ID equals at sign plus ID slash title. The text size attribute speaks for itself, and the layout center horizontal places our view in the center of the screen horizontally. The ID attribute becomes the reference name for this view in the R file so that we can access this view just like we did for the layout file in the main activity. The at symbol is just notation for IDs, and the plus symbol indicates that this is a new occurrence of a resource with this ID. If we take a look at the graphical layout tab now, we can see these changes take place on our text view.